Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about administrative separation, also known as ADCEP. And in a nutshell, this is an employment hearing to determine whether or not that service member should be retained or separated from the service before their contract ends. Now, there's a number of reasons why a service member may go to administrative separation. Some of the most common are uh, pattern of misconduct, uh, drug abuse. So if, if that service member um, has a positive year analysis, they may go to administrative separation. Um, also failure of BCP, a body composition program, uh, commission of a serious offense, uh, two or more alcohol related incidents in one enlistment. So there's a number of reasons and there's, there's more than I mentioned on why a service member may go to administrative separation. And some of those um, are at the discretion of the commanding officer, for example, a pattern of misconduct. Uh, the CO has discretion on whether or not to send a member to ADCEP after two or more. Um, for, for drug abuse, for a positive year analysis, he does not have discretion. He has to send that to administrative separation if he believes that it was wrongful. Um, so here we go. We have the administrative separation process. Now you're going to have. Now for the process itself, that service member is first going to be notified of administrative separation. They're going to be notified of the basis of administrative separation and also specifically what forms that basis for sending that service member to administrative separation. And then you have the board, and that's what we're going to talk about today. That board hearing. So at that board, you're going to have three individuals. You're going to have a senior member, which is going to be an 04 hired. You're going to have another member, which is typically an 01 to 03. And then you're going to have another board member that's typically an E7 or higher. And they're going to form the board, okay? And then you're going to have the government, and they're called the recorder. And they're going to present the case. They're going to show, or excuse me, they're going to present the case and they're going to advocate that that service member be separated and that they be given an other than honorable characterization of service. And then you're going to have the defense. You're going to have that service member. And in this situation, in this forum, that service member is called the respondent. But for now, we're just going to put a D for defense, okay? And they're going to have their attorney there, and they're going to have that service member is going to be there. And they're going to present their case, and they're going to say that, you know, that service member uh, should be retained, and that if not retained, he, should re he or she should receive at least a general uh, characterization of service. In addition, um, at this hearing, you can also call witnesses to testify. The recorder can call witnesses, and uh, the defense, the respondent, can call witnesses. So, how this works is... Um, they go into this board and they do something called voir dire. For uh, these purposes, we'll just say jury selection, okay? But it's called voir dire, and basically you're questioning these members' relationship. You're questioning uh, whether they can be fair and impartial, okay? And if they, if they cannot be fair and impartial, if there's any relationship, for example, if the 04 writes on the 01 um, or to 03, then you're going to challenge them, okay? So after jury selection, then you move on. You move on to opening, okay? Opening statements. The respondent, or excuse me, the recorder is first going to go, and they're going to give opening statements. They're basically going to say the service members... Uh, as poor performance, um, they did what they're accused of, and that they should be separated from the service with an other than honorable characterization of service. Okay. Then the defense, the, the respondent, is going to do an opening, and they're going to say that that service member is a great, uh, performs great, and that they should be retained. Okay. After opening, um, you usually have binders. Um, full of uh, documentation, uh, evidence that's presented. So the recorder is going to present a binder to the board, and that's going to have all the applicable orders, 
that's going to have the characterization of service, that's going to have um, the section in the, uh, the separations manual on uh, this particular basis for separation. They're, all, they're also going to have statements um, from people that say the, the, the respondent is a, is a poor performer, they should be separated, and they should be separated with another than honorable. Uh, in addition, after that, after that binder is given, um, then the, the respondent provides a binder, and that has um, all that individual's awards. They may have uh, uh, pros and cons or uh, fitness reports if they have fitness reports, and also statements from people saying uh, they're a great performer, uh, they should be retained, and if not retained, they should be given an honorable characterization of service. So they're going to go and they're going to review those. Those could take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour for the service members to review those. Maybe even longer if they've had a long career and they have a lot of uh, fitness reports and awards. So after they do that, everyone comes back into the room and then they're going to they're gonna call witnesses, okay? And first... The government's going to go, or the, the recorder's going to go, and they're going to call witnesses. These witnesses are going to say that the service member is a poor performer, that they should be separated, and that they should uh, be given an other than honorable. Okay? Then um, the defense attorney can come up and they can cross examine those witnesses. Okay? They can ask, you know, what, uh, you know, on what basis um, are you determining this? They can also question any misconduct. If they're aware of any misconduct that that witness has, they can also question them about that, okay? Um, so after the government, after the recorder calls all the witnesses, then the defense can call their witnesses. They'll call witnesses to testify that this is a great service member, their performance is awesome, that they should be retained, and if not retained, they should receive an, uh, an honorable characterization of service, okay? So, after the witnesses are all called, then you have, um, you have closing statements, okay? So you have closing statements. And the recorder, the government, will go first, and they'll make a closing statement summarizing all the evidence that they presented, stating that that service member should be, um, should be, is separated from the service and that they should receive an other than honorable characterization of, ser of service and they should be separated immediately. And then the defense will go, they'll speak on behalf of the respondent and they'll say that, um, you know, that service member should be retained and if not retained, they should at least receive a general under honorable conditions or maybe even an honorable depending on, you know, if they had any heroic acts in their record, um, etc. In addition, one thing I forgot to hit on, in addition to uh, the witnesses, um, when it's the defense's turn to present, that uh, service member can also make a statement, either a sworn or unsworn statement to the board. Okay. So back to closing. Everyone does closing. Um, and then what happens is they go back and they deliberate. Okay. And they'll deliberate. And there's four recommendations that they're making to the separation authority. And that separation authority is typically the first flag officer in the chain of command for that service member. Okay? And the four recommendations that they're going to make is, number one, the basis of separation. Is the basis of separation met? So in a pattern of misconduct, that's typically met if the documentation is solid, if it's all been signed, and it's good to go. The basis is going to be met. And so we typically don't fight basis if all the paperwork is good to go and legit. Um, now, if you're, if it's a drug case and there's a positive urinalysis uh, for drugs, then the defense may attack basis. Okay, they might say that the test, the chain of custody was incorrect, um, the testing was off, there was spillage. Um, as far as the science behind it, it's very difficult to challenge the science behind it because the science is pretty solid, but you might have other um, issues as far as innocent, inge innocent ingestion, et cetera, okay? So after basis, um, if they determine basis is met, they go on to number two is um, should we separate 
or retain this service member. So if they decide to retain, they don't go on to the, the, the third and fourth question, and that service member just goes back to the unit. If they decide to separate, they go on to number three. What is that service member's characterization of service? Is it honorable? Is it general? Or is it other than honorable? Okay. And then after that, they go on to number four. Is should we suspend this separation for up to 12 months? Now, these recommendations go up to the separation authority. Typically, that's the first five officers, so you know, the CG. These go up to the CG, and he can get no worse than what the board recommended, unless, for, for example, for the Marine Corps, he goes up to the Secretary of Navy. But he typically doesn't do that, okay? So he can get no worse than what the board recommended. He can always get better, and there's no issue. Uh, the only thing that he does not have to go by and doesn't have to go up to the Secretary of the Navy is this suspension. So the board can recommend suspension for up to 12 months and he can say, you know what, we're not going to suspend his separation, we're going to separate him immediately. Okay. So there it is, that is the administrative separation forward process in a nutshell. In addition, once this is all concluded, the defense attorney should write a letter of deficiency, LOD for short. And basically, that's uh, memorializing any issues that occurred in the administrative separation. If there was an issue uh, with the board members, maybe writing on one another, like the 04 was the RS for the 03, um, they'll call that out in this LOD that they challenged that board member and that they still uh, were able to sit on that board. So they'll write all those issues out, okay, if there's any bias, etc. And that's another attempt uh, to advocate to the general on uh, retaining that service member. In addition, that's going to help that service member later on down the road once they're discharged and they decide to, to go for a, uh, a characterization of service upgrade. They can use that LOD, they can go out and hire an attorney and provide that LOD to that attorney in order to uh, draft a package to submit um, and get their discharge upgraded. Or they can do that themselves. But there it is. That is the administrative separation uh, process in a nutshell. Um, stay tuned, follow this channel, and we'll be posting more videos on uh, other, other processes uh, within the Marine Corps and within the service in general. All right, thank you.